Okay, um, thank you all for coming this morning. My name is Carl Gabrielson, as Charles said. Um, I teach here at Lakeland College Japan. I'm the EAP program coordinator, and I also teach a little bit in the academic program. Um, but most of my work has been working with our EAP, our English for Academic Purposes students. Last summer, we had a student join our program in a fairly low level, and on the set, about the third or fourth day of class, when the student was asked to give a self-introduction speech, they stood in front of the class and came out as transgender. Um, we'd never had an openly transgendered student before, and so the teacher came to me and talked to me about it, and I said, okay, well, we need to make sure the student knows that they're taken care of. So I called the student up for a private conversation and we went over things like what pronouns would you like your teachers and classmates to use and which, res which restrooms are appropriate for you to use um, and also things like the school anti-discrimination policy, things like that. Um, through that experience I started thinking about, well, okay, this was kind of slapdash on my part, but okay, we can offer these things, but what about the other international or global or American universities, how much care are they giving to these LGBT students? Um, so I decided I would look into this. Um, to back up just for a minute, if you're unaware of the term LGBT or LGBTQIA+, is the long version, um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and so on, essentially this is just a way of summarizing all of the different um, ways that someone might express a, what do I want to say, non-normative or non-majority sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender performance. Um, so it includes anyone who is outside what we call cisgender, heterosexual. Um, looking into this, in America right now, this is actually becoming a very big topic for higher education. Um, as some of you may know, Competition over students in America, just like here, is getting more and more intense. Um, people are calling the market stagnant. There's not a lot of growth going on. Um, but uh, several researchers have started saying that one of the big growth areas now is LGBT students. Um, one of the main reasons for this is that the typical coming out age for an LGBT individual is about 20 years old. So that's right in the center of your college education. So there are students who are already kind of struggling with these issues, thinking about their identity, and looking for an environment where they can safely be open about who they are. Um, this, is, this statistic is for America, but um, research suggests that there may be a similar age in Japan, maybe a little higher or a little lower, but that's also in flux right now recently with increased media attention, the number of people who are actively coming out is increasingly leaps and bounds, in fact. Um, so bringing this story to Japan, as everyone at this conference knows, I'm sure, um, a big part of the global education initiative in Japan is attracting international students. Um, our, our Prime Minister has indicated that this is one of his top priorities for education reform and for keeping education on top, we're keeping education moving and developing in Japan. Um, so this means that if Japan wants to be open to all kinds of global students, then in my opinion, they need to start being open to these LGBT students as well. So I wanted to just kind of take a cursory look at how much support an LGBT student could get as an international student coming into Japan. Um, to back up a little bit and show you what kind of support would be available in the US. Um, there's a group called Campus Pride. Campus Pride has uh, a survey that is voluntary. Schools request it and they send it out. It has over 40 questions um, covering all different aspects of um, LGBT from do your faculty members get medical benefits for same-sex partners to do you have transgender friendly, friendly restrooms uh, do you have clubs and circles for LGBT students, etc.? Um, and then they use this to issue a, a rating of one to five stars. Um, this past year they had 50 schools reach the five star rank. So that's showing a lot of uh, growth in this area in terms of LGBT student care in the U.S. Um, for my own research, 
Um, I focus on three things, on policy inclusion, particularly about protections for the students, if they get um, protection from discrimination and bullying in school policy, on academic life, if the students have opportunities to study LGBT issues, and on student life, if they have student organizations or ways to meet other LGBT students or engage in LGBT-related activities socially. Um, and I got just a little bit of information kind of, what I want to say, peripherally, um, about the recruitment process. I'll talk a little bit about that, too. Um, but just to give you a frame of reference, when we talk about student life, for example, uh, Stanford University is one of the five-star ranked schools. And in fact, not only does it have an overall five-star ranking, it has five stars in every category. So when we talk about Stanford University, if we look at student life, this is the list of clubs for LGBT students. Um, I won't go into all of them, but they're divided by ethnicity, by religion, by major, by graduate school, um, by, by specific interests. So just one university has all of these. Um, so in order to investigate what Japan has to offer, I kind of lied. I didn't really lie. What I did was I wrote emails to 20 different schools to their international student admissions office. And I didn't say I was a student, but I didn't say I wasn't. I just wrote and said, I'm interested in your program. Um, I targeted 20 different schools, including all of the Global 30 schools. That's a misnomer. There's 13 of them. Um, right? I, all of the schools that self-identify as international or American, so ourselves, Temple University, all of the schools with the big international in their name. Um, and then a couple of other schools that I picked up when I joined a workshop in March about LGBT student inclusion. And I met some students there who connected me to their universities. Um, I contacted 20 and I only got responses from 11. In fact, I really only got responses from 9 and then two more I got responses from students, but not from the schools. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but I wrote to them, again, mainly through the admissions offices, but I also tried to get in touch with student LGBT organizations, mainly using social media. Um, I had three questions that I sent, and I sent them in English, in fairly basic English, trying to make them as accessible as possible. The first, does your school have a policy or rules to protect LGBT students from discrimination or bullying? So that's the policy inclusion part. Um, second, do you have any classes that, on LGBT issues? So that's academic life. And third, does your school have circles or clubs for LGBT students, so covering student life? Um, so let me talk a bit about my results. Question one, does your school have a policy or rules to protect LGBT students? Of the 11 schools that answered me, two said absolutely yes. Then I had Five more that said, we have schools protecting students' human rights, or we have anti-discrimination policies, or we have anti-bullying policies, but they do not specify LGBT, however LGBT would be covered. Um, then I got two, no, we don't have anything covering them, and two, no answer. Um, question two, do you have any classes on LGBT issues? Um, Two schools said, yes, we specifically have LGBT-related classes. Uh, one school said they're only at the graduate level, but another school even has an undergraduate major in gender studies, and that it specifically includes LGBT classes. Um, five schools said that they offered LGBT-related content in classes in gender studies or human sexuality or um, majority-minority relations, contemporary social issues, things like that. And then again, two no's and two no answers. Um, and then the final question, does your school have circles or clubs for LGBT students? Um, five of them actually said yes. Um, but one of those five didn't really say yes. They said, we have some unofficial groups and some students who like to hang out, but nothing recognized. Um, three days after I got that email, I met the president of that university's officially recognized LGBT circle. He was very shocked to know that his admissions officers did not know that his group existed because they've been registered for four years now. <laughs> um, but 
Uh, beyond that, I got one school who said that they had an unofficial organization. Two schools said that we used to, but when the president graduated, no one took over, and so it's become inactive. And then one school that didn't answer, or two no's. Um, so what can I draw from all of this? Um, so first of all, eight of the 11 schools have two or more yes answers. A lot of those were qualified yes answers. We talk about LGBT in other classes, or we have a policy that doesn't specifically name them. But that's still enough, I think, for a little bit of optimism, to say, yes, there's some awareness of this issue. The schools are starting to put some effort into it, starting to think about it. Um, and in fact, the one school that gave me all no answers was apologetic. They said, we're really sorry. We know that this is something we should be addressing. This is a big issue now, but we haven't gotten there yet. So even the schools that said no, we're at least showing we know we should be thinking about this. Um, but an interesting thing that came out of this is the issue of language. Several of the schools said we have issues on LGBT, or we have classes on LGBT in Japanese. Um, or we have a, an LGBT circle, but all of the meetings are done in Japanese. So although it's generally available, it may not be accessible for international students, especially students who are joining one of the English-based programs. Um, and as I said, it's problematic, I think, that in, all of, in many of these answers, there's a lack of a specific LGBT focus. They tend to, again, include everyone in a blanket statement of human rights. And while that's good that they have that policy, it's not specifically reassuring to LGBT students who are looking for a safe environment in which they feel that they can come out and openly express who they are. Um, and then the last thing that comes out of my conclusions is the recruiters. Um, as I said, they were all very kind, even the ones who said no apologized for it. Um, but of course there's the case of the recruiter who didn't know that their school had an organization. So even though that recruiter was trying to be helpful, she didn't have enough information to really help. Um, beyond that, I actually got one answer from one of Japan's top universities. When I asked these questions, the answer that I got was, please be aware that your transgendered status will not affect your admissions decision. Um, I have not identified as transgender or anything else. Um, so I was very glad that transgendered status does not affect admissions decisions. But as someone who does not identify as transgender, I was a little bit uncomfortable with that response. So I respect their enthusiasm. But clearly they don't know yet how to handle these kinds of questions. Um, so that's something that I think really needs to be addressed, is these recruiters need to know, if they're going to talk about these issues, what language to use, when it's okay to assume and not to assume. Again, basic things like pronouns get very complicated when we start to talk about LGBT issues. Um, so a few directions for further, further research that came out of my study. Um, nine of the schools didn't answer me. Now, I don't know if this is because I just emailed on the wrong day, or it went to the spam filter, or if it was because they didn't know how to answer and they felt uncomfortable, um, or if they actively didn't want to recruit me based on these questions. But this, I think, was the most shocking result I got out of the whole thing, that someone who is ostensibly looking to enroll in their program didn't even get a response to these fairly easy questions. Um, so I'd like to know why. Um, and then second, um, going back to my own story about our student, when it was time for me to talk to the student about our school's anti-discrimination policy, because the student was a low-level English student, I pulled out the English student handbook and the Japanese student handbook. And I opened up to the page in the English student handbook and I said, here, look, it says you're protected based on um, race, religion, background, etc., 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 and it includes sexual orientation and gender identity. And then I pulled out the Japanese, and I found religion, gender, background. But nothing about sexual orientation or gender identity, even though it was meant to be a translation of the same document. Um, 
Now, fortunately, we're a very small school, and I have easy access to the administration. Hi, Megumi. Um, so, it was very easy for us to fix this. And now our school can be counted as one that specifies the LGBT in its policy in both English and Japanese. But this made me wonder about other schools, the schools who said that they included it. Is it included in both languages? Um, do the Japanese students know they're protected as well as the international students? So that's another thing that I would like to look into more in the future. Um, so I guess I'm going a little bit fast. but. Um, to wrap things up, the two things that I came away from, or came away, that I brought away with me from this. Um, one is that there's a growing sense that these students need support, but it's clearly not enough yet. Um, but it seems that the schools want to support these students, that there's more positive motion. And so I hope that that will increase, because certainly the students would like to have that support. Um, but second, from the school's perspective, this seems like a very good opportunity to start attracting more international students, also to support domestic students, which translates into profit for the school, right? Um, if I had been a real student and I was told that my transgender status would not affect my admissions decision, I clearly would have looked somewhere else. Um, so if schools can just take the time to look at these issues and start making some basic changes towards addressing them, I think it could be very beneficial for the schools themselves. Thank you.